After a very long train ride this morning that took too long, we're in Lucca. Yeah. Um, it's a small Italian town. So we're gonna go exploring. Alright, so we're checking out the Harry Potter store. It's got it's cool Katana's Harry Potter stuff Disney in Luca. Yeah. Oh wait, there's an owl? Oh yeah, it's the owl. Oh, it's 90 bucks. That's expensive. It's got the talking hat. Cool store. Cool store. Mom. in the bottom of a church in Lucca and you can see here is an archaeological dig but what's cool is they've got on top of that they have Roman remains and as well there is also some Roman remains from 100 BC and you can see underneath that there's a beautiful mosaic it's hard to see but you can kind of see it It's truly amazing to do this. If anybody comes to Italy, I highly recommend to do some of these archeological digs because they're just very cool to see. It's pretty cool. You can see the different layers of um, how things were built on top of everything else. And it's just layers and layers and layers. It's truly amazing. Yeah, All right, so we just <laughs> just finished doing Luca, and um, we're just walking back at this point. We took the train back. We spent the whole day riding. Our, uh, <laughs> I was watching Andrew almost getting run over by a car. Um, yeah, we were riding around in a bike, and then. We are just going home at this point after a long day in Luca, which was was cute. Definitely a lot less crazy than Florence. Florence is super busy, and there often feels like there's too many tourists that are here. Um, but the kids were talking about how they're just getting to know the city, and they have to go home. I know, that's the sad part. Oh. Vacation is over. We only have three days? Mm, not that many. Is it two? Ugh, rough. <laughs> Bummer. The next day. We're going to go check out the Vatican today and we're going to go get something to eat. We took the, the train this morning, packed everything all up. And now we are going to chow down. Um, at a nice restaurant and then go check out the Vatican. I think everybody just wants to go home and see the puppy dogs and um, just get back to normal. So that's how she goes when you go on a nice long, I don't know what this is, vacation work, um, sort of. I heard this term, I think they call it bleisure now. This is what the hotel industry calls it, bleisure where it's business leisure. That's kind of what I've been doing, is combining. This is where I was teaching internationally and as well, um, the family kind of came along. So I had time to, in between teaching, to go and explore Italy. When I grow up, do this Come We're in, where are we boys? Rome. Rome. One of the last Day. One of the things that I noticed when we were at the Vatican Museum is just the struggle of humanity with trying to figure it out themselves and how the Roman Catholic Church was sort of positioning itself relative to the rest of humanity. There's all sorts of material from the Greeks 
to the Egyptians, to all different kinds of civilizations that are in the uh, Vatican Museum. And you can see that it was largely to preserve much of this history that has gotten lost. And many different artifacts have gotten lost from different civilizations. But at the same time, how we as humans struggle with making sense of this and how we sort of position ourselves, given um, we are. I love the sort of sense of, you know, one of the key things that, is, that has been progress or that has made progress for humanity is diversity and bringing in new ideas from all over the place. But then at the same time, how we've decided to use these ideas um, for our own progress and um, how they've sort of been changed in the ebb and flow between openness with other people and other civilizations and having our own identity has switched back and forth to create um, all sorts of tensions along the way. And it's just very evident when you're seeing all of these amazing works of art for over the last millennials as um, you know, just society has struggled with this openness to new ideas and new things versus having our own collective identity and what that actually looks like for ourselves. It's hard to give you a sense of the scale of the Vatican. You have to really be there to see it, but look at these pillars. These are probably about twice the size, twice the, twice the width of me. Here's my kids having holy water from the Vatican. They're drinking it. I thought my grandma would, or grandma would get a kick out of this. But the scale of the Vatican is just astounding. And it really takes your breath away. This is the famous one that they were talking about. Yeah, that was... This was in my room for a very, very long time when I was growing up. So the Roman Catholic Church was always really big in my life. We'd do a lot of church. And all of the symbols that I've seen at the Vatican brought up a lot of emotions, um, feelings of what my life was like many years ago. It's much different than what it is today. And um, my life was very much centered around the church at one point. Um, but, you know, it brought up just all of these feelings. And I'm assuming many of you have these sort of moments where things are pretty surreal, where you see all of these sort of moments from your childhood come back. And many of the things that I had in my childhood was about the church. And so there they go. So we packed everybody up, and now they are off without me. It's so sad. So my wife convinced me to come to this museum. It was a bit of a walk, um, but I took it was two kilometers. It wasn't too bad. Um, but it is a museum. It's a private collection that is owned. Um, by somebody that collected a lot of military stuff. And I'm in uh, Parens uh, Frenze, I think it's the Stib Stibert, uh, Stibert Museum. And uh, it's pretty cool. There's all sorts of stuff to look at in here. I think I'll spend a little bit of time perusing, but it's this giant private collection of somebody that was just really interested in military gear, um, which to me, I think is, I think it's a little morbid, um, a little, it's not something I would be interested in, um, particularly given that this is the person's house. So can you imagine walking around and seeing all of this when you're living here? Um, the person doesn't live here anymore, but now it's a private museum. It was very interesting to see.
Yeah, it's really crazy. All of these are flint locks of all different kinds. Pretty amazing to see. Um, these are crossbows. Just all sorts of weird and random stuff and like just unbelievable amounts of it. That's here. Um, all sorts of flint locks. I think those are the things to go onto ships, I believe, if I remember the big ones. Uh, it's amazing. This is Napoleon's outfit from when he took over Italy and he was crowned, I believe, the emperor of Italy. All right, I totally highly recommend for you to come see this place. It, there's a lot that's going on, but also um, some of the folks that work here are just amazing. I just had a conversation for an hour um, with one of the, the workers that were here. Highly recommend it. You know, it's just fascinating to learn about the different history of things that's going on. Um, if you want to learn about history, come to the Stibert Museum. You'll learn so much. And it's not just about warfare. There's, there's a lot that's going on here. Um, just incredible. So after walking back, or going to that crazy Stilbert Museum, it was really interesting, super fascinating that he was just this, his dad made a whole bunch of money, I guess, um, from the East Indian Trading Company. I don't, and, and then, you know, his entire life was just collecting. I just think like he was the comic book man, you know, that sort of stereotypical collector kind of person from um, two, three hundred years ago and just collected a bunch of random stuff. I couldn't imagine living in a house like that that had so much stuff. Um, and just was, I mean, frankly, it's very cool and it's worthy of going to see, but at the same time, it's just bizarre. <laughs> I couldn't imagine um, living today with all of that. But I also see what's interesting too, when you see this her mansion in the house is that it is so decorative and so or ornate. Um, and is different than modern culture, but of course I'm not in the, you know, wealthy elite. But it's just interesting, right? Like how different society was and the sort of single signaling that they were doing in that time, the wealth uh, of, you know, it's very important to have ornate, beautiful things that had a lot of clutter, which today is, is not in modern culture, I guess, but just fascinating with all of the stuff. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out, and I was thinking about this, is I didn't, I have not really did uh, an Italian video in a while, because um, I've actually been learning it. I haven't been doing a lot of videos. I've been learning it on Duolingo, which is past the level two. Uh, which is kind of fun. Um, and as I'm walking around, I start picking up on some things and listening to conversations. I can pick up some things, not completely at this moment, but it's been really fun to, to, to as an experiment. Now, can I, can I speak a lot in Italian at this moment? No, but for a month of learning it, I think I'm on like day 50 something of learning Italian and doing it quite aggressively. Um, yeah, I kind of recommend it. It's kind of been a fun experiment and it's added some to my life. Maybe I need to take away from my life, but um, you no, know, as a, is going forward, I think it's a wonderful experience to learn languages, learn different cultures. Um, completely not useful in my life, but um, very just fun, I guess, is the way to think about it. And I think I'll definitely be taking away some of it. I'm, hopefully I'll, I'll finish with my Italian um, so I become fluent, um, but 
you know, that's going to take some time, obviously, and I'll continue to do it and fill you in with what's actually going on. So, um, you know, uh, io parlo italiano, uh, io parlo italiano, um, piccolo e impare um, longo. Um, whew, that's that's all I, in, in it basically I just said, uh, you know, I'm learning and it's gonna take some time uh, to learn um, Italian, but it's getting there, right? So, il, uh, uh, il nostro familia, um, or la, la nostra familia, um, uh, uh, Trevari Uza, uh, Trevari de Uza, uh, e, um, Stazira, um, io, uh, Trevari de Uza, um, Allora. <laughs> so, I just saying my family went back to the United States and I'm gonna be traveling back. I forgot how to say two more days. Do a do a do a uh, journey. Um, so so two more days we'll be traveling and going back to the USA as well. So really fun experience to be in Italy. Um, really fun to see students grow and develop. It's really fun to see myself grow and develop and my kids and family. It's just a great experience to, to be able to do this. Um, and it was really refreshing for me, as you could probably tell, is sort of down moments um, in my sort of academic career. But this has been a very much a moment that I appreciate. And um, yeah, it's just been fun. All right, so that Italian, which is terrible, I was just thinking about it. It should be uh, La Nostra Familia va um, alle usa or um, io andare uh, us, uh, United States, Ameri America, um, Stazira or in a due uh, giorni. Something along those lines. I had the wrong verbs and was saying things incorrectly, but no, that's how she goes. That's okay. <laughs> well, this is a first. Boarding a plane, one of these jumbo 747 planes right off the tarmac. I've never done that before. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs>